Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with a new quilt top tutorial. I am going to be making a mini batik quilt. I sell a lot of fat sixteenths and I thought I'd like to use that in a tutorial so those of you who buy those from me know what you can do with them. Well, there's all kinds of things you can do with them. You can just cut them any way you want, use them any way you want. But I'm going to show you what you can do if you buy them from me already pre-cut don't have to do much cutting. We're just going to slap these together with a little bit of cutting and it's going to make a little quilt because I'm only using 16. Sometimes I sell in sets of 8, 16, 32. I've done 50 before. So if you want to make something bigger using this pattern, just go ahead and get yourself more fat 16. If you want to cut your own fat 16, you order a quarter of a yard of fabric so you'll be getting at least nine inches this way and then you're just going to cut in four pieces and depending on the width of your fabric you could get uh, a clean 10 inch all the way to maybe uh, 11 inches. I cut mine nine and a half by ten and a half and, and I will have this exact quilt kit on eBay so check out the link down below you might want to go do that now in case they sell out I don't know how many I'll have I haven't cut them all yet but I will have quite a few so you have a good chance of grabbing one this is leftover yardage from a big batik order that I placed recently and I had these four prints left so those are the prints that I'm going with it's not that I necessarily would have picked this out but I like it because there's something kind of dark kind of light kind of dark kind of light so I'm just gonna uh, think for a minute and we'll get started I just have these in order A B C D I just chose light dark light dark we're going to be making a cut and we're going to be mixing these. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I just want my stacks to all be the same so I know I can get as much variety as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these and we want them all right side up. And I'm just going to put it on a line, any line. And then the next one, so that's A. This is B. I already was unsure of the right side or not. This is C. Let me separate these guys. And D. So you can stack them in any order, but just keep the order the same. Now, I'm going to be using my rotary cutter. Stop the cheering. And I'm going to make a cut. You could cut like wherever you want and you could do the same each time, but I'm going to cut in a different position each time. And I'm going to start two inches in. Uh, doesn't matter what size block or rectangle you have. Uh, you can just, uh, I don't know, pick a line and go with it. So I'm going to start at two inches and I am going to make one cut right here. Separate. I'm going to take the top strip. I'm going to put it underneath. Now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to sew this to this and then the next one to the next one and so on. Let's go to the machine. This one is for sure falling into the one hour quilt top because it's a quickie. And since it's small, I don't know, I could maybe back it. I don't know. I don't like that part. You know that about me. Don't make me feel like I have to do it. So now I'm just going to take one strip and I'm going to sew it to this piece right here. And batik, oh my goodness, it's just so nice for quilting. It, um, it's a tighter weave and it's just very, uh, very easy and easy to finger press too. So we're going to be doing that. And I'm going to use a quarter of an inch. I go by the edge of my foot as a, the guide. I'm going to leave that right there and do the next one. Okay, I'm going to snip these and I'm going to do some finger pressing right here before your very eyes. And like I said, batiks are very easy to finger press. 
they're almost like, I don't know, like a sheet material. I don't know if I have the right settings. I don't know if I'm too close or too far. Maybe this is better. I don't know. So I'm just going to finger press. And I wasn't perfect with that, and that's okay. If you do have fabric that's not perfectly squared or rectangled, you can sew your stuff together first and then trim the whole block. So let's just finish the finger pressing and then we'll go cut the rest. See, I will not even be bringing these to the iron at all until uh, the whole thing is probably put together. Doesn't matter which way you put your seam. Okay, let's go cut. I forgot to mention that I'm putting the wider part this way, so it's ten and a half this way, nine and a half that way. But it wouldn't matter. You could turn it if you want. <laughs> Two. Three. And a four, or A, B, C, D. Now I cut two inches in. This time I'm going to cut three inches in. Let's straighten that one out a little bit. So, one, two, three. This time I'm going to take two of these. One, two, leave them together, and I'm putting the both of them underneath. That way we're going to get at least three sets that are totally different. We'll have an A, matched up with a B and then a C a D the fourth set is just going to be a repeat of something else because we can't match up a a because then that would be the same block so I'm going to go take these and I will sew them just like you saw me sew let's do a cutting and then I'll do all the sewing and then I'll come back so another one a And I am going to go in four inches this time. One, two, three, four. This time I'm going to take three off the top. One, two, three. So I'm just going to take that last one and put it on top. So there's another set. And then last but not least, we're going to do one or A. And if I cut five, that's almost in half. I'm not sure I like that idea. I'm just going to do two and a half on this last one. Let's just be different. My first cut was two, and then three, and then four, and now I'm doing two and a half. And no matter what combination we do, it's going to be a repeat from the past, so I'm just going to flip and just do one, and I'll sew these together like that. I have all my blocks cut and sewn back together and it really, it was so fast. I absolutely loved this. I'm going to try to finish everything right here on this table because it's a dark day and that bed in the other room isn't going to work for me for picture taking. So all you have to do now is you have to just figure out how you want to put these together. Four across by four down. It's almost going to be square. Here's the thing, we started with a rectangle, so our block is still going to be rectangular by a little. It should be nine and a half this way by 10 this way because of the seam allowance. We lost a half an inch. Let's just check that. Nine and a half by 10. So I'm going to not do any trimming and I'm just going to put them all together with the, you know, the bars going vertically. But if you wanted to be able to turn this to make different patterns, all you would have to do is trim a half an inch on one of your blocks to make them fit. And I'm just going to lay these out um, off camera so I can think a little bit. I'm going to try to just, you know, of course, mix up the colors and also mix up the width of the bars. Now, even though the bars are different widths, the block is still the same. It's still going to be 10 inches across. And then what was the other thing I wanted to say? Hmm. Oh, and I'm going to do one row with the bar on this side, and the next row will be the bar on the other side. I just don't want the bars one on top of the other. So it's going to go this way for this row, and then the bars to the left for this row, and then bars to the right, and then bars to the left. So let me get it all fixed, and I will show you what I came up with. 
This was a little bit more challenging than I expected. I thought I could have it so that nothing touches, but we had so many color varieties that um, that was next to impossible. So then I decided to give up trying to do that, and I do have it where some of the colors might um, touch a little bit, like at the intersections or whatever, and I kind of like it. It's like it's dripping down on the quilt. I know you can't really see. Let me see. Let me raise you a little bit. You still can't really see very much. I will say, if you want more choices as to how to place these, you could definitely square them up to nine and a half inch squares, and then you can do, you know, turning things. And that, I think, would really look cool. I just wanted to do it this way, and um, I'm good with it. So now I'm just going to create my four rows, and then I will sew those four rows together, and then we will be done. I'm not going to go ahead and, and put a backing or batting on it, because it's just, uh, just, I just don't want to. But I do have videos that show how to do that, and I, and I will try to find at least one of those. I might have it with batting, I might have it without batting. I'll look, I will link to them down below, because you can just put, um, like a piece of flannel on the back of this and just, you know, put right sides together. You don't need batting. Put right sides together and sew all around like you would um, for like a pillow and leave an opening and then turn it and then just sew your opening shut and you have a nice little blanket. It's easy to do when they're not big and then if you want you can still sew some lines just to keep it held together. You don't have to do that and you can do it with batting also. You would do the batting on the bottom and then the two fabrics right sides together. You sew over that whole thing and then when you turn the batting will be on the inside. I will have a video for the one with the batting down below. All right let me put this all together and I'll be right back. You guys this came out so awesome. I wish I could show it to you, but there's no way I can do it in the other room. It's too dark in there. I don't have good lights. I just love it. Let me measure it, but before I forget, I want to tell you that if you want to go with just 16 blocks, but you would like it a little bit bigger, you can absolutely add sashing. You could add sashing around the block, or you could also have added sashing around each one of these pieces. You know, when you cut them, they could have all been sashed. And if you want, before you sew the strips together, if you want, you can go lay all that stuff out and see if you like a pattern, but don't make yourself sick over that. I think it's faster to just sew them together like I did and then just arrange them any way you want. And don't worry if things touch. Like here I have orange touching orange. But see, I like that you know, somewhere here, right there. It, I don't mind that at all. It just looks like it's, you know, dripping down to the next row. This quilt top will also be on eBay. Go down below and look in the description box. I will have a link to the penny auction. It will start at one penny with free shipping for USA. Outside USA, you have to pay the shipping. So I'm going to measure this and, you know, it's a good size for on the couch or in the car or for a kid or for a nice big doggy who likes a blankie or some kitties. Where's my measuring tape? I'm coming in at just a little over 38 by 36. And do remember that on eBay it's going to be just this quilt top. I'm not finishing it. So you can use the fabric any way you want. If you want to, you know, cut it to make a tote bag or two or a decorative pillow, whatever you want, it's yours. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more soon. So subscribe. Bye.